And this bird was set free, symbolizing that the spirit of this man had been redeemed and cleansed and restored and made clean and brought into fellowship, and he hadn't done a thing for himself. Not one thing. And the bird was set free. Paul made quite an issue of that. So that was a great, the great point of where the Renaissance began, the great revival of a, a last age, several hundred years now, began with Luther, justified by faith. And some people said justifying means just as if I'd never done it. And, but it's a, it, it's a work that God does for us. There's not a work that we have anything to do with except just let him do it. He was brought. He didn't come himself. He didn't provide any offerings. He didn't do any of the job. His soul was set free, and he had nothing to do about it. As I said before, Paul made quite an issue of this. We're not saved by works. In fact, if we go to works, our salvation is negated. We fall from grace. It's no longer grace, but law works. Sometimes, in some places, I don't know about here, sometimes governments will make a deal. They'll have some piece of property they want to get rid of. And they'll sell it just for one pound. And then it's a sale. Which is one pound. It might be worth a million pounds, no matter. It's a sale, which is one pound. Do you ever do that around here? The United States has done that very often. They'll sell out a, a big air base or something to some government or something. Or sometimes people, I know people that have bought it, things that the government's used and didn't want them anymore. And they sell it for one dollar. It's a sale. With one dollar, it's a sale. It's not a gift. They can't give it. But they can sell it and put any price they want to on it. You see what I mean? And if, if we paid, if we paid one dollar, it's no longer a gift, is it? It's a sale. And that's what Paul makes an issue of in Galatians. We can't pay anything for what is free. And if we pay anything for what is not free, you know, we pay for it. I don't care how much, how little it is. How little, how great the divergence between what you paid and what the value is. If you paid anything at all, it's not free, is it? It's not free at all. And this man didn't do one single thing for himself. If he had love, it would have it would spoil the picture. So when God paints a picture, it's got to be just right. That's why we were so angry with Moses when Moses struck the rock the second time because Jesus wasn't crucified twice, was he? He spoiled the picture. God's not going to spoil his pictures. And this is a perfect picture. The bird was set loose, he was pronounced clean, and he hadn't done a thing for himself. Now that's important, because we're going to see it in that way. It's important that that's clear in your mind. This man, up to this point, is absolutely, we would put him in our terms, regenerated. He's pronounced clean. His soul is set free, and it's free. It didn't cost him a thing. It's a gift of God. The gift of God is eternal life, isn't it? The gift of God is justification. The gift of God is the cleansing by the blood of Jesus. We have nothing to do about it. That's God's gift to us. We just receive it. All you have to do is get in the right part of just believing and just receiving what God will do to you, for you. And with that alone, this man has come into eternal life, he's come into cleansing, his spirit is set free, he is justified by faith. But now we come to something else. The picture changes in the eighth chapter, in the eighth verse. It totally changes. Now we find him doing something about it. But it's another cleansing. 
he's already been pronounced, declared, the word pronounced means he's declared clean. And the bird is set free. Now it's important to remember those two things. You see, already he, now he's regenerated, already he's saved, already the work is over, and now he starts all up again. Would you believe that? He said, well, what a conundrum. Yes, perhaps it is. But you see, there are things that are free, but there are things that are not free. Revelation 3, 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold that is tried in the fire. I sell white raiments. Isn't that right? He said, that's what you have to buy. Remember the story of the ten uh, virgins of five wise and the five foolish? They said, go buy the oil. Go to the sellers and buy it. Now some things we buy, but there's some things that's free. And we must keep those separate or we get confused in our mind. There are some things we do have to do. There are some things that are done for us. There is something God asks of us. There are some things he doesn't ask of us anything. He didn't ask us to do a thing regarding the regeneration, the, 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 the spirit of man being brought in to salvation. He didn't ask us a thing for that. He did it. He said, well, he trod the one press alone. He said, I looked for a man and found none, so my own right arm brought salvation. He did it. And to him be all the glory. Now, after that, and not before, after that, now something else happens. You know, if you, you have a cart and a horse. Now, each is needful. But it makes a great deal of difference what, puts, what you put in front, doesn't it? With a horse in front, the cart goes fine. But if you put the cart in front, it doesn't go so well, does it? This has come first. Now comes the other. Works will never produce faith. But faith will produce works. You see what I mean? And that's why James can say, if you believe, show me your faith by your works. And if you don't have works following your faith, then you really don't have faith. But all your works will never produce one ounce of faith. There's nothing you can do for that. But having faith, we use it. And so this has come first in our picture. And this picture is a beautiful picture because it's bringing it's a picture of a sinner being brought back into full relationship with God. It's one of the beautiful pictures in the scripture. All done in types and shadows. And so after this wonderful setting free, and the bird is free, and you've all had that experience, I presume, of practically all of you, where you had that wonderful feeling that you're, you're set free and you're loved by God and you love God and it's wonderful. And then you discover you weren't where you thought you were. Something's wrong. Hey, what is this? You see, up to this point, he's not even in the camp yet. He's just set free. But he's really not in the congregation of saints yet. He is, though, has had a real, genuine experience. But to be able to come into the congregation of saints, he's got to do something else. There's some things that have to be done. The first thing we read, and it, and it starts out in a strange way, the verse before says that he has pronounced him clean, let the living bird loose in the open field, and it starts out the next verse, verse 8, and he that is to be cleansed, well, I thought he was pronounced clean. What's the matter here? Isn't that strange? You have a declaration, a declaration absolute that he is clean now. He's been sprinkled with the blood. He's been cleansed and the bird set free. Now he starts being cleansed again. Well, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Let me give you another conundrum while we're in conundrums. Turn with me to 1 John, 